In today's deep learning video, we're gonna be taking a look at activation functions within PyTorch. And this is one video in a series that I am developing on PyTorch, but no worries if you haven't watched the other videos, I'll be still going over the background of activation functions as well as coding a few of them out with you. So you should be able to pick up this concept. Now, what do activation functions do? Well, their main purpose is to apply nonlinear transformations to your data. And often in PyTorch, you're gonna see the most common activation function out there is probably the ReLU. And there's quite a few of them that are similar to ReLU. So you have ReLU, you have ELU, Leaky ReLU, Parametric ReLU, then you have Soft Plus and also CLU. Another activation function that's a little bit newer developed by the Google Brain team is gonna be called Swish. Then you have something called a softmax, which I've covered in another video, but don't worry, I will be also showing you how it works in this video. Uh, what the softmax essentially does is it converts a vector of real numbers into a probability distribution. And like I said, this will be the first example in this video. And then you have two that are very common with binary classifications, which are gonna be sigmoid and tan h. With that being said, I am gonna jump right now on my computer and let's start coding. So let's start off by importing in a few things. So we're going to import in torch then we're going to import in torch.nn and then we're going to say as an n and um, one more, we're going to import in our torch.optim. So import in torch.optim as optim. You should be pretty familiar with these three um, optimizer then over here for inheriting when you build out your classes. And then also over here, just for PyTorch in itself. And uh, we should be good to go. So let's take a look at Softmax. And essentially what Softmax is gonna do, as I, I talked about in the intro, it's gonna take your tensor and then you're gonna essentially get probabilities. It's used quite a bit with classification problems. Although you don't specifically have to call out Softmax um, because it's gonna be built into cross entropy, but it's a very good example of applying a nonlinear transformation. So let's do that. So uh, let's create our logits. We're gonna say that's getting to over here to torch.tensor. We're gonna throw in some values in over here. So I'm gonna put like 2.5, 0 0.4, and we'll say like 1.1, okay. For our next one over here, we're gonna say 0 0.1, 2.2, uh, 0 0.6. And our third one over here, we're gonna say 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and then 3.0. All right, so we have those over here. And now, essentially, we're gonna call our softmax. So we'll just say softmax prob. We're gonna say it's equal to over here, torch.softmax. Then we put in our logits, and then we're gonna say our dimension in this case is gonna be equal to one, okay? And let's do one more line. We're gonna say print, and let's just grab our soft max probability over here. Uh, so you can see how this has changed quite a bit. So here we go. Uh, you can see originally what we are had for input, right? And this is gonna be our output. Uh, so you can see like, as we have a greater number over here, our probability is gonna be a lot larger, which again, very useful on, on classification. We have 0 0.73 here. We have 0 0.75, right, the 2.2. And then you see this is 3.0, we have 0 0.8815. Now, what I'm gonna do is show you an example within like some simple neural networks. And that's where you're gonna use these most often. And I'll, I'll show you two different cases. One that we're gonna use it specifically within our init and also our forward. And then the next one we're just gonna have in our forward pass. And that's gonna be this video. It's gonna be not too bad. On that side of things, I know PyTorch can be a bit complicated and the concepts take a while to grasp. This one I think is pretty easy. So let's do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say class simple nn. Uh, we're gonna inherit our nn.module. So put that in over here. Okay, uh, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna def, we'll put in our init over here and then put a few things in here. We're gonna have a self. We need to put our input size. If I can type in for 
poured properly. Then we're going to have our hidden size. And finally, we're going to have our output size. So let's put that over here. Awesome. Then we're going to put super over here. We're going to super. We're going to grab in simple and n self. And then we're going to do another init. So init like that. Okay. Our special thunder method. Great. And let's build out our layers. So we're going to say self dot layer one equals and then dot linear. And then we're going to throw in our input size. And we're going to put our hidden size like that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put in, so it's now time to use an activation function. And the one I'm going to use for this first example is going to be a leaky relu. Um, and one of the things as a, I don't know if I mentioned it in the intro or not, um, but it's always a good thing to test out the different activation functions. Sometimes you're gonna get a little bit more accuracy by using one over the other. So all we're doing for the activation function, we're going back to self, right? And I've, I've talked quite a bit in the videos about how these classes work. Just think of self as like instance of the class when you create it, right? So uh, when we create a model, that's gonna be that over here. So uh, we're gonna say self dot leaky relu equals nn dot leaky relu and not all activation functions require them but a leaky relu does and within a leaky relu you're gonna have to put something um called a parameter and this specific parameter that you're gonna have to put in here is gonna be negative so so always look at the documentation for these and negative soap we're going to put over here 0 0.01 uh, so you can test out different versions of this negative slope to see what gets the most accuracy within your specific model now what i'm going to do and you can also notice that i did not have any impact on the input size or hidden layer we're going to actually do this over here with self.layer2 um, so we're going to say equals nn.linear then we're going to throw in our hidden size again followed by our output size this time. So again, no input, right? We're applying a transformation, but we're not technically changing these sizes. So you have your leaky relu, right? We still have our hidden size and our output size over here. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call our forward pass. So EF forward put self, and we'll also put our X over here as is common with a forward pass. Then let's call out a few things. So we're going to say x equals self dot layer one x. Okay. Then we're going to say x is equal to self dot leaky relu. I'm just going to copy that. Is I know I'm going to make a mistake. And we'll put an x over here. And then finally, we're going to say x equals self dot layer two like this. And then you just return your X here at the end. Uh, that's gonna be our simple and end for this one over here. And usually I'm gonna go down and create a new cell, but I'm gonna just put all this together in this one and I'll create a new cell uh, when we go through our second example. So now we should define our input size, hidden size, and then also our output. So I'm gonna just say input size equals to 10, hidden size equals 20 and then output size equals one. Let's create our model. So model equals simple and n, right? Now, essentially, let's just copy these three. So input size, and again, you don't technically have to put these. You could just literally put the numbers in here, but for simplicity's sake, and since we're gonna be copying some of this code into the next one as well, now what we're gonna have to do is have some input data. So I'm gonna say our input data is gonna be equal to torch.rand n over here. And we're gonna say five, and then we're gonna say input size. Okay, awesome. And then our output is gonna be equal to model. We're gonna throw in our input data that and finally let's print out everything so uh, we are going to 
print our input data and we're gonna print our output data just to show you specifically how this data has been transformed. Don't like how I have that, but the reason is I just forgot to put data over here. So I do have an error and I just had a small typo in my code. It should be relu like this with a capital L and also a capital U and uh, super simple mistake, but easy to do with these and make sure I change that up over here. And here we go. Great. It's now working, right? So we can see how the data has been transformed from our input data into our output. And all right, so we have our output over here. So essentially, if we go back here, we had our input size of 10, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then our output size is one. And we can see that over here. And we applied our leaky relu with this negative slope of 0 0.01. So let's go through another example now. And this time we are just gonna be applying our activation functions within this board over here. So let's do this one. And we're gonna go code in this cell. So all we're gonna do is, honestly, we can pretty much copy a lot of this code. So this time I'm gonna remove this leaky relu. So all this is going to be saying, right? Class simple and then and then module def in it over here, self input hidden and our output size. We're going to super again, simple and then self in it, right? And then we're going to have our layer one and layer two. So that's all going to be the same. We're going to change up our different activation functions this time in the forward. So let's call our forward. We're going to say def forward over here. Let's do our self in an X. So technically you're going to copy this if you wanted to. Uh, but here's where it changes. So this time we're gonna go to our classic relu. Uh, so we're gonna put our relu over here and we're gonna say that's gonna be equal to torch dot relu like this. And then inside we're gonna say self dot layer one and we're gonna put X over here. So we didn't have relu in here, but we can use it in our forward over here. And then just to get familiar with another one, we're gonna say clu this time. And we're gonna say torch dot clu like that. And what we're gonna say is self dot layer two and x relu in here like this. So again, like our x is here. I guess we could have technically put it just as an x and then put our x here, but you'll see why I'm gonna do that. Uh, the reason why is I just wanna show you how these transformations work. Uh, we're also gonna just return x relu and also x like that, okay? Now, the rest of this code, a lot of this is gonna be the same. So I'm just gonna copy our input, this, right? It's gonna change a little bit over here, but I'm gonna copy in at least our input size, hidden size and output size. Then we're gonna have our model, which is gonna be the same. Our input data is gonna be the same. Uh, output's gonna be a little bit different. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna output our relu and we're gonna output on this side of things, our clu, right? And then we have our model input data. And then what we're gonna do is print out each of these. So print our input data. Then we're gonna print out our output relu and then we're going to print out our output clu like that and there we go so we have our input data we have our data after we applied the relu and then after we applied the clu and again, how this works on this side of things, right? If you take a look at this init method over here, first you take a look at self layer one, right? We get the results from there. Then you pass this through the torch.relu. Then you put the torch relu over here into layer two, which then is gonna get put into this clu over here. And 
that it's gonna be the final output for this specific model, but I just wanted to show how all these work and how you can technically apply uh, multiple activation functions. So, so not too hard of a deep learning video today. So if this video was helpful and you learned a few new things about activation functions, if you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's 100% for free, but it does allow YouTube to share this video with others and helps grow the channel so that way other people can learn from these data science resources that I am creating every single week. By the way, the next video I recommend you check out is this one right over here on the logistic regression. In this video, I'm actually going to cover TanH as well as using a sigmoid function in there. So you want even more practice with your activation functions and to be able to apply it to a full model.